On the show tonight, we've got Scotland's finest, the toast of Ireland, the best of British, and one excited Welsh woman in the audience. Yakita! Let's start the show! <laughs> Beautifully done. And uh, welcome to the first show of the new year. Hey! Good to be back. Good to be back. Uh, such great guests on tonight's show. I'll be treating them all like royalty. You know, slagging them off in a book, ripping their necklaces and pushing them into a dog bowl. <laughs> mm. Tensions. Tension still high between the walls, but there is a glimmer of hope. Prince Harry insists he's still making preparations for his visit to the UK for the coronation. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there, there he is, getting ready to have his book shoved up his arse. <laughs> uh, let's get some guests on! <laughs> Later, we'll have music from George Topping singer Lewis Capaldi! <laughs> She rose to fame as Sister Michael in the hit show Dairy Girls and now stars in the new superhero comedy extraordinary It's Siobhan McSweeney! Yay, yeah. yeah, yeah, Siobhan McSweeney! Yay! Hello. Hi. Yeah. Have a seat, Thank too. Thank you. Hey, Chester McMafia and Little Women now returning for the final time as Tommy Lee Royce in the hit series Happy Valley. It's James Norton, everybody! <laughs> Hello! 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 And he's the Irish star from The Fall, The Tourist in Belfast. Always a pleasure to welcome Mr. Jamie Dornan. <laughs> Hello. Good to see you. Happy New Year. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm just grabbing their drinks. Mm. There you go. <laughs> oh, cup of tea. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice, Sophie. <laughs> Welcome, welcome all, and, and Happy New Year and Christmas and all those happy things. Happy New Year. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Siobhan. Happy New happy Year. Happy New Year. Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Cheers. Jesus, when? <laughs> Said anything. Yeah. Rude. Uh, now, I, I don't know what any of you did. Well, I, I know what some of you did for New Year's uh, because you posted about it. You, you spent New Year's with Stanley Tucci. I did, yeah. Yeah. Now you I, rec I rec recommend that to anyone. It's, uh... Look, it doesn't look like much fun. <laughs> <laughs> That was the image you chose. How do you think we kept the fire going and <laughs> all sorts of wine? There's no wine or anything left. No, there's no wine. <laughs> there appears to be an unfinished jigsaw. <laughs> oh, well, I'm not sad that we didn't do a fucking jigsaw on... Um... <laughs> you didn't do much of it anyway. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was his kids. But also, like, the single candle looks a bit Scrooge, doesn't it? Well, it's just... it's, um... <laughs> We had fun, like... <laughs> a good night. Mind you, that's probably more fun than what James Norton did on New Year's Day, cos you... I uh, went swimming in the sea. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Apparently you were... I think you posted a picture. Here you are. That, is that post-swim? That's post-swim. Yeah, I don't know why I always feel the need to open my mouth like that. <laughs> I always... Well, yeah. it looks like you're having more fun than him. <laughs> <laughs> And you've just been in the sea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were exhilarated. That was, that was. Well, we actually swam every day for a week. We were at, uh, down in Norfolk. Got back this morning. Yeah. Oh wow. Wow. Yeah, but, but I love uh, it. But apparently that day you were having second thoughts. Well, no, there was a day. I think it was the day after New Year's Day, and uh, I was getting changed. I was in that sort of awkward position, you know, half changed. And this, uh, an elderly couple came up behind me and said, "Did I see you on the telly last night?" <laughs> And I was like, maybe yes, you did. And then the second question was, um, "Are you mad? You're not going swimming in the sea, you absolute idiot." And then I was like, well, feeling quite heroic. I was like, yes, I am. And then I went to the waves. And that particular day was horrendous weather. And I didn't know until I got there that it was just this very dangerous uh, thing to do. And then I turned around and the, uh, the couple had got their phones out. And like, <laughs> 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 so uh, it was either, you know, near death experience or lose face. And of course, I. Yeah. Great. Look at you now. You're Looking back. back. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And Sophie Okonedo, you've just started working, where, you've just been working with Jamie Dornan. Yeah, but we've, we've been in, in a 
film together yeah. for quite a few months, but we just met today, just yeah. backstage yeah. for the first time. I, li I like it seen. better that way. <laughs> <laughs> I've only done it face to face. No, no, yeah. 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 It's one yeah. of those weird things, was it? We, 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 when did we wrap? August. Um, and we just didn't have any scenes together. No. But your headshot, you know, they have everyone's in the makeup trailer, everyone's headshot. So I stared at your, your face for a long time and then. <laughs> I'm staring at your, your face. <laughs> but then here's the thing. Siobhan, you've worked with both the gentlemen. You've worked with James and Jamie. Yes. Yep. Yes, I've had two people on the sketch. <laughs> <laughs> Look out, Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming for you. Um, and I'm feeling frisky. <laughs> <laughs> so you were in uh, Nowhere Space. Special. Yes. 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 Well done. Yeah. 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 Well, I love, you know I love that. No, I film. know, I know. I'm very yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you. Oh, it's yeah. a lovely little film. Yeah, no, I was only in it in a day. I mean, I'm surprised if you, you remember. It's my favourite day, of course. It was. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great. <laughs> it was and then Jamie was your first ever television. That's right, yeah, in the fall. Yeah, so um, that was um, terrifying. And uh, we never actually met as well because you were starting your process there where you didn't like to meet people. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you were saying it was all quite serious. You're a nurse, and uh, no, I was, I was, I was a forensics officer. Uh, was admittedly, I understand why you would think nurse because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really know what I was doing. I'm sort of like, <laughs> you're carrying a thermometer. Sort of yeah. Like, mm, yes, <laughs> yes, scary, <laughs> handsome killer. <laughs> Which one of the cores will he kill next? <laughs> It was just like the sea of dark-headed, beautiful people. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll die. I did not die. <laughs> now, Jamie Dornan, uh, well, we can only hope your 2023 is as good as your 2022, because what a year it was. The success of Belfast, and, of course, now the BBC have just revealed that The Tourist was the most-watched drama of 2022. <laughs> I know. Pick it up. Feel good to be part of a, a big hit. Yeah, you don't. You know, you don't. None of we don't. You don't. That's not what you're there aiming to do. You know, you're trying to hopefully entice people to watch whatever you're in or whatever. But um, it's not really why you do it, I guess. But when something like that happens and it's uh, a lot gets a lot of attention and you know, it's it's just a bonus. It's yeah. really really nice. So presumably there's going to be more the tourist. Well, there wasn't meant to be, but then that many people watch something. <laughs> and you know how the world yeah. works, Graham. Yeah. Um, so, uh, if there's an appetite for it, and the, you know, Jack and Harry Williams, who created the show, are very smart fellas, and they've worked out a way of uh, continuing the story. So, yeah, we're going we're gonna to do some more this year, yeah. Okay. And uh, obviously, if you haven't seen The Tourist, it is all, the whole thing's available on, on iPlayer still. But if it, people hadn't seen it, what's your kind of one line pitch? How do you describe it to people? Uh, it's, it's a guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I play a guy, he's introduced to everyone as the man. Um, we don't know a lot about him purposely. And he's driving through the Australian outback in this shitty little car and uh, seems to be quite happy. He's sort of singing along to himself and the world looks good. And then um, a massive truck comes and gets in this very intense car chase that goes on for a very long time. And he's hit off the road and he unconscious and he wakes up in hospital and he's no memory of who he is or why he's in Australia. And, Little by little, over six hours, if you're willing to, to go the distance, <laughs> um, we find out that, uh, why he's there and um, you find out some pretty nasty things about his, his past. Well, we've got a clip. Uh, this is you in your little car with that, having yes. that encounter. Here we go.
see that in the outback where you hear about uh, snakes all the time. Did you have to deal with those? Uh, I didn't see a snake. There was a snake incident on set one day. It was someone opened a car, not that car, but one of the cars uh, in it, and there was a snake inside the car that had been, like, staying in there, like a sort of, like, Airbnb type vibe. <laughs> and, um, but I wasn't there that day, so I didn't, have, I didn't deal with snakes. But now, here's the thing. Most people, you don't like snakes. Sophie, you like snakes. Yeah, I wouldn't like to find one just like that, but <laughs> yeah. I, I did work with snakes on the stage when I did play Cleopatra. There's a snake... Yeah, at the end, and Famously. of the play, it's not a spoiler alert. <laughs> and, <laughs> I actually thought, well, they were talking about it at the beginning, what, what we're going to do about the snake. I said, well, like, I'm not going to bring, after doing a three and a half hour show, I'm not going to bring a rubber snake out and it's just going to look bad. So yeah. we should just try. <laughs> we should just try. <laughs> Everyone laughing. <laughs> the most serious moment, she killed herself. And, um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and um, anyway, so I, we had these real snakes and I did grow to really love them. Really? Is that... Yeah. That snake looked really dangerous. Is that made up? No. To made, made to look dangerous? <laughs> no, no, it looks no. They, were all, good, they yeah. were all poison free. <laughs> no, I'm with James. That looked like horrible. a killer. Yeah. 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 That yeah. looked like a killer. I didn't have... There was no real mishap. One night, one got stuck in... Cos I'm laying on the floor, like, dead. I know if you haven't seen it, sorry, but... <laughs> laying her dead <laughs> at the end of the play. And um, one the snake... I sort of hold on to it with my hand, and I sort of fall on the floor. I kind of keep a grip, and then Charmian comes over and takes the snake away, and I was holding on to it, and it slipped out of my hand, and then it went into my wig. Oi! <laughs> got caught in my wig. Oh, but I have to keep still, cos I'm dead, so I can't suddenly go, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, one of the actors came and sort of managed to sort of get it out and sort of pull a pin out and get the... Out my wig. <laughs> uh, but now, here's the thing. Uh, Jamie Dornan, currently you reunited with uh, Sir Kenneth Branagh because you're in the new Hercule Poirot film. What's it called? The Haunting of Venice. Uh, the Haunting of Venice is okay. what it's called, yeah. Uh, 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 Haunting of Venice, I think. They should drop that. Well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's establish it now. They should really <laughs> drop the R. Uh, and Haunting in Venice. Yeah. Uh, but you're not just back with Kenneth, you're also reunited with your young co-star from uh, yeah. Belfast, Jude Hill. There we are, yeah. Oh. There you are. Us, yeah. And, like, oh. he was so celebrated after Belfast, is he sort of uncontrollable now that he's in another film? Well, talk about no eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get me started on me, Jude Hill. There. Um, <laughs> I actually like choke up looking at Jude. Like I, oh. I love that boy so much. He's unbelievable, and he's um, he's obviously become a monster now. He's so rich, <laughs> 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 and he got a couple of awards uh, a year How ago. How old is he now? He's twelve. But he turned out he's the sweetest kid. You know, like I don't know where we all stand on rap gifts at the end of a job, but um, I'm pretty good about them when I'm when I've you know liked people. Um, <laughs> and, and, I just but, get but, one. But, uh, <laughs> Sophie? Uh, <laughs> we shouldn't even... <laughs> Pineapple even gave me something. Um, but on, on this, I don't know about Haunting of Venice, it just felt like there was a sense that we probably just weren't doing that. We all, we all had a, an easy up that we shared. Ken does this lovely thing of no actor just goes off to their trailer in downtime. We all sit in an easy up inside the studio together. Um, and then we were on the, like our final day before Christmas, and um, I think we'd all sort of had a chat. Like, don't no bother of rap. Don't bother rap gifts, just lads. Come on. Jude <laughs> turns up with a Santa sack, honestly, Aww. bigger than him. Literally <laughs> came in like this <laughs> over his shoulder, starts rummaging through. Has got everyone the most individualised. I mean, he got me a deflated football, so I don't know what that. <laughs> <laughs> with no pump, like I don't know what that. <laughs> Says about it, but like, he got he got everyone like he really thought it out, you know, and um, <laughs> so sweet. So as much as he's like a big star now, he's still he's still the same. Oh, that's gorgeous. Because uh, James Norton, uh, obviously you worked with a, a young Irish actor in in Nora Special, but you worked with children starting out. Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yes. You like you, you were like a child. You were. Yes, I was a children's a partner. Turn. This 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 follows me, and I'm very. I, it was a real period of my life. Um, I, I yeah. There were a few moments uh, in my early twenties when I was working as a children's party organizer uh, to get myself financially. Can I just say that really talks oh. it up? I was a children's party organizer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more balloon. The more balloon. <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> where's the clown? He's late. <laughs> 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 I wasn't the clown. People mix up. I wasn't the clown. You I were never the, the clown. No, I was never the clown. 
But there were, there were a few hairy moments around <laughs> that time in my life, um, which is a story which often come, which haunts me, which was basically I... Uh, it was always weekend work, because Saturday and Sunday, kids yeah. have their parties. Yeah. And uh, Friday, and I was, you know, 22, and I'd been out for a, you know, massive, large <laughs> night. Um, and I was very tired and hadn't slept, and I woke up at about, you know, nine, having gone to bed about four. And uh, in those days, you've got a spreadsheet with um, the name of the kid and, the number, and the, the number of kids' guests, the name of the host, the parent, their phone number, and the assistant and their phone number. And I was lying on my friend's mum's yoga bench. I remember I was just like, oh, I couldn't bear the idea of doing this, this party with 50 little... Anyway, um, <laughs> called, called my assistant and said, I'm not sure if I can get through this. Like, I've been out till four, I'm feeling horrible, the, these little shits look screaming at me. And at the end of this diatribe, I get the, <gasps> this, the, this pause, and the, and the man's oh, voice goes, sorry, who, who do you think you're talking to? And I'm like, oh, this is Joe, isn't it? This is my assistant. He's like, no, no, I'm, I'm Mark, I'm the dad. <laughs> <laughs> Awful. I know. It's all bad. And then, and then I, um, and then of course I was like, oh my god, I'll give you the best party ever. I'm so sorry. And I turned up, and sweetly, I did give them. I was dripping with sweat, stinking of booze, and, <laughs> and, but I did give them the best party ever. And he, he, he tipped me twenty quid at the end. Did he? Yeah. He's oh, beautiful. Yeah. Well deserved. Well deserved. Yeah. Well deserved. <laughs> Just a reminder that The Tourist is available to watch on BBC iPlayer and, of course, we all look forward to season two. Jamie Dornan, everybody! <laughs> hey, good. <laughs> Sophie Ogonedo returns to the West End stage, playing Medea in Medea at the <laughs> brand-new Soho Place Theatre. It starts on the 17th of February, previews from the 10th. So, uh, obviously, Everyone knows the story of Medea, but just in case somebody <laughs> thick has wandered in. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, what is Medea about? You are Medea. It's a, it's a comedy, really. <laughs> <laughs> Don't believe her. Um, it's a play about a woman who has been, I think, treated quite badly and um, seeks revenge. In quite a big way. Yes, but she goes big. She goes big with her revenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and often when you know, when I do interview someone in a Greek tragedy, uh, it'll be a new adaptation or a new translation. But this is an old adaptation. Yeah, we did like a sort of the, the director Dominic Cook is a really old friend of mine, and he was saying for a few years, oh, I think we should do Medea, and I was like, oh, I don't want to do that part. It's too hard. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and then he said, let's do a workshop of it. And about a year ago, we did a workshop in it, and we looked at a few versions. We found this version written by um, an American poet. Oh, my God, the name's just completely gone. Oh, right. <laughs> they'll, they'll insert Is he it. dead? <laughs> <laughs> if he's dead, it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> if he's alive, this is pretty eggy. Uh, <laughs> Come on in! <laughs> oh. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll be Googling it now, They'll be Googling it now. Robinson Jeffers. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Well <laughs> <laughs> Can I just um, compose myself? Right, yeah. okay. <laughs> what I was going to say, let me come to what I was going to say, is we thought about getting a new a writer in now to do a new version of it, but this was so great in the workshop, and also I was a bit worried about if someone writes you a new version and then they've gone to all that trouble and then you get it through the post and you don't really like it, then you're kind of... Mm. I was worried about a new version. Yes. And this was great and it was kind of unusual. It's only ever been done, I think, on Broadway once in the 1940s. OK. And so, yeah. Because once you started working, you kind of haven't stopped working. You've had this extraordinary career, Oscar nominated for Hotel Rwanda, mm. but it does seem like theatre is the thing you like to do most. I do like it all, but I, th I can't... I, would, I couldn't imagine being an actor and not doing the theatre. I just couldn't, I couldn't imagine it. Because I just... There's something that happens even just when you're in this studio now and you have an audience and there's a sort of energy that happens between you, the audience, the other actors, and it's kind of magic. Mm. Because, Jamie Dornan, have you ever done a play? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I asked, he answered. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you fancy it? No. No, I do. Like, no, I'd love to. I mean, I, had, I quite did like youth theatre and I did at school and uh, uh, um, drama, like, everything back in the day, but not professionally. No, I, I'd lo no, I would love to do it. I'd love to do it. I think after Fifty Shades and stuff, a lot of stuff that came theatre-wise was just not didn't feel like the right thing to do. After. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was sort of based on the hype of that, and you know, not 
obviously different subject matter, but like sort of buying into whatever that was, yeah. mm. which I wanted to avoid. And um, if it's the right thing, yeah. Because, Siobhan, you're off to the National, aren't you? I am, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing Dancing at Lunasa. Oh, um, brilliant. Really? Yeah, yeah, bit of... I did that for Amdram, I was yeah. in that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I oh, it's, yeah. it's a beautiful, beautiful play. Yeah, no, um, I started off in theatre, and theatre, yeah, I, I, I recognise completely what you're saying. Um, uh, yeah, back to the National. I think it's my sixth show now that, I, that oh. I'll be doing there. Oh, um, wow. Brilliant. wow. It's the worst and best feeling in the world. It, it really, I mean, you're, you're about to do something as well, aren't you? This is brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, segway, good. segway, all over. Oh, so, oh, sorry. No, no, that's good. No, I love that's it. Good. No, no, and, and that is it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you ruined it, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined it. Just gone with it. And then there was beautiful <laughs> flow. It was all gorgeous, but no. Um, James, you're going to do a play soon. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, I'm doing a play um, called uh, A Little Life, oh. which is an adaptation of. The most hard. What are you actually? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the most. Yeah. I broke me. That big broke me. Yeah. I'm playing Jude, which is terrible. Oh. Yeah. Who else is in it? Hold on. Hold I feel on. like there's a <laughs> spoiler. <laughs> that, that's, e that's the list, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. And Eva von Hove wow. is directing it. Eva is oh, wow. adapted and, and is directing. And Hanya Yanagihara wrote it. It's a, she wrote it about 10 years ago, and it's a big, sensational novel. If you've read it, you have a oh. very powerful reaction yeah. to it. Jesus, and, and this is not a short play. No, it is um, three and a half eight hours long, which um, it was, they, they did a Dutch production of it, which went from Amsterdam to Edinburgh and did a little run in... Uh, New York, and that was four hours plus. But this is I, the amazing producers from Wessex Grove have said, you know, it's only three and a half. So uh, we have one interval, but the book is eight hundred pages. Yeah, so you know, you, yeah, you need to get, you've got a lot to get through. Yeah, and not not to be lied, but but for you, because you're diabetic, so that yeah, that is that difficult to be on stage for that length of time. It, the added component is the fact that I don't leave the stage for a couple of hours, and yeah, I'm a di type one diabetic, so I have. Juice and I can't bring it up because it's got branding on it, but I have like <laughs> sweet stuff, things. sweet Lots things here, yeah. here yeah. which I'll have to have scattered around the stage just in case I go hypoglycemic. Oh, wow. So yeah, wow. it, it's just an added thing yeah, to yeah, sort yeah, of navigate. Yeah, yeah. But it's not, it's not a. I mean, for all the type one diabetics out there, it does not stop you from doing long four-hour ah. plays. Yeah. <laughs> type one diabetics are going oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the perk. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one thing now to, to be in the West End, which, uh, apart from Jamie Ward, but... Uh... <laughs> I mean, I've, I've heard it's great. Like... <laughs> <laughs> but, so, to win a Tony uh, on Broadway, acting opposite Denzel Washington, I mean, that must have been, like, a different league. It must have felt amazing. Yeah, that was... That was I mean, every time... I mean, my sort of memories I've got over my career... I can always pin... And they usually are theatre jobs. I mean, just... I can remember when I first worked at the National and cycling over Waterloo mm. Bridge and just, like, I've made it. I'm now mm. in a show at the National. I've made it. Oh, and cool. then when I went to... got to Broadway, I was, like... I remember just going up Broadway and getting to the rehearsal and thinking, I've just... I'm done. Mm. Mm. My work yeah, yeah. here is done, you know, so... And is that the show that the Obamas came to see? They did, yeah. Mm. That was... pretty amazing. <laughs> and do they keep that under wraps that they're coming, or...? Um, to the... Audience, but to I mean you could know. I mean literally there was helicopters circling <laughs> around, <laughs> armed guards on every they blocked off like five roads around Broadway. So it was pretty obvious that something was happening. They told us about two days before and we had to get to the theatre very early and we had a guard outside each dressing room and we were, you know, given a sort of talk and a briefing and stuff like that and it was yeah. What's the audience like then? Like, I mean, are they looking at the stage at all? Are they just like. Well, I. <laughs> what they said is just looking. At there was them. no, no one was told. But what they did, they brought all the audience in, and then just before the curtain went up, they kind of slipped them in. Mm. But everybody, and I was like behind the curtain. The, the place went insane. Wow. I mean, it's like there was just flat, some people were like <laughs> flashing cameras, and it took oh. 10, 15 minutes before oh we could God. start the show. Wow. Because people went you... insane, and then. He sort of, I think everyone sort of said, you know, we're not going to get yeah. the show done. And then they seem to just go with it. And Raising the Sun is a play, oh, it's about a lot of things, but there's a speech that Denzel Washington's character gives in the middle of it where he talks about, as a, a black man living in this time in poverty, you know, he cannot dream, he cannot have dreams. You know, he's like a Raising the Sun shriveled up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there was, you know, Obama in the fourth yeah. row. And wow. I even had to tell... I just... There was not a dry eye yeah, in the house yeah. that, you know... And did you get to... You got to meet them, though, didn't you? Yeah, they came. So, normally, if people come round, they come um, after the show, but 
because of, they had to rush off, like, as soon as, like, they trying to show that they were out, you know, for security. So they, um, they brought them in the interval. Oh, my God. When you're oh, still in character, saying. darling. Yes. <laughs> wow. uh, now, you're not supposed to film them, I was are told you? not to film <laughs> anything. But... <laughs> 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 I might have handed my phone to someone. It's a one-off moment in my life. Of but I wanted to have, like, some evidence. No, and you got your understudy to do the yes. thing. Yes. And you're holding them together. You're very good. I... So, you, we've sent us the footage. So, here we are. So, here's a bomb backstage. <laughs> and now he's coming on to you. Look at you. Nice kiss. Yes, nice to meet you. Staying cool. Staying cool. Stay cool. Did you get it? <laughs> Did you get it? <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> 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 well, you never know. He might come and see you in Medea at the new <laughs> Soho Place Theatre starting on the 17th of February. Tickets on sale now. Very good. OK. And... Oh. It's only an hour and a half. Only an hour and a half. <laughs> Diabetics, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're in. Ow. Uh, now, uh, James Norton making lots of people happy this new year because it is the return of Happy Valley. Oh! <laughs> it continues at 9 o'clock on Sundays on BBC One. And, of course, iPlayer, the first episode aired on New Year's Day. People loved it. Mm. I mean, it must have been a huge relief because people have waited. So to come back and everyone love it must yeah. be great. And then seven years, you don't, there's no guarantee that people are going to come back because it's, you know, not many shows leave that amount of space. But Sally, I mean, she wanted to let the actor playing Ryan grow up, be old enough to access Tommy and also for Catherine to get to that point of retirement. But yeah, it was, it was a little nerve wracking because there's no guarantee that anyone's going to want to return after seven years. No, because people, I mean, I think a lot of audiences must have just thought, oh, well, that's it. Yeah. They talked about season three, but it's clearly it's not happening. I think, I mean, I got asked about it a lot and you, and you felt the appetite was still there and, and there was such a love for the show. And, uh, and such a confidence, I think, after those first two series. So, if people didn't see uh, last Sunday's, at the start of this season, uh, where do we find Tommy? So, Tommy has spent the last seven years... Uh, growing his hair. Growing his hair <laughs> and his beard, <laughs> um, incarcerated. And, uh, he, yeah, he's a this, like, different energy. He's got a different look. Sally likes to give Tommy some bold looks every time. Yeah. Um, and he's basically spent the, the last seven years obsessing about these two kind of poles in his life, the, the hatred he has for Catherine and the love he has for his son. And, um, and those, those obsessions have become more and more uh, potent, I guess. Well, listen, we've got an exclusive clip from this Sunday's episode, and this is Tommy encountering the prison chaplain. I'll be in court next Tuesday because you shot me to the police all those months ago. I want you to know I forgive you. May the Lord be with you. It is weird talking to you now. You're such a nice, smiley, happy man <laughs> than that. It's... <laughs> uh, listen, James, uh, five more episodes to go. Yes. Uh, uh, someone must die, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm talking to the pineapple. <laughs> I don't know. Either. Uh, and listen, I suppose this is the end. I mean, there is no more. So it, it, <laughs> is this sad or is it... Are you thinking, thank God, I never have to inhabit Tommy Lee Royce again? Uh, I mean... It, it's funny because he's a despicable monster, but they become, mm. you know, really enticing and, and, and you know, they, they become these weird sort of distant friends who you love seeing again. And I, to be honest, I've been asked a lot, like, is it really horrible playing Tommy? Do you, has it, do you find it hard to shake it? And I, I love playing him. I mean, like, <laughs> that scene, it was so, That guy mm. was built like a monster. He was a gymnast. And I got to walk up to him and just, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, and also, I, I care about what people think. I, like, we all do. Actors mm. are horribly neurotic. And... That guy doesn't give a shit. He literally walks through the world, yeah. does not care. Yeah. 
So there'll be, there, there are parts of it. I'll miss Tommy, I'll miss the, the show. I mean, there are certain other, other parts of it which have been... I mean, when it comes out, there's a lot of... You know, the people, people get quite into it. There's, um, there's, a, there's a whole... I find there's a whole other element. You know, a, a lady grabbed me and sort of screamed at me and, you know, said, you're a monster, and sort of people start to... You become a possession. What I found I had a brilliant one recently. Someone sent me a grab of someone said, um, oh, Tommy Lee Royce, he makes my valley happy. Which I thought was... <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I meant it as a compliment. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, a reminder the final series of Happy Valley continues on Sundays at 9 o'clock on BBC One and, of course, on the iPlayer. James <laughs> Norton, very good. Uh, Now, we have a very different show from Siobhan. Extraordinary lands on Disney Plus from the 25th of January. And this is a, it's a brand new comedy and it's about uh, superheroes, right? Yes, but not in the way, not in a sort of lycra and marvel and x ray eyes. <laughs> as, as disappointed as you will be in me not being in lycra. <laughs> <laughs> no lycra. No I did ask. Um, no, it's it's uh, it's a, it's more of a comedy, and it happens to be in a world where there are superpowers. But um, but like lots of superpowers. Lots of superpowers. So it's set in a sort of contemporary London, where when you hit eighteen, and this may sound familiar, when you hit eighteen, you develop a superpower. Um, it's primarily a comedy which places... Uh, so my daughter in it, who turns 25, her power hasn't come in yet. So it's that whole idea of, like, when you're in your early 20s and you don't know who you are and you feel like a loser and everybody else is... You know, they know what their mission in life is and you just... You're going around the place, you know, just happy to be there. And uh, it's sort of the framework where you can explore those things, but, you know, it's very, very identifiable. And what do you, what's your superpower? My superpower, Mary, uh, her mother, is that I can work technology but because... Just because... <laughs> <laughs> the, the bar's quite low. <laughs> Obviously, my work with a toaster... Sort of... <laughs> hey, look, we've got a clip. This is you not being quite able to handle your superpowers. I left Luke a voicemail. Oh, I'll call you back. It's all kicking off. Please do. Have fuck, buddy. Oh, sorry, Mary. Uh, have fudge, buddy. That sounds worse. No, fix it. Use your power, like, delete it or recall it or something. No, well, well, where is it, then? No, no, press the phone button, Mum. Oh, Christ, I think I'm calling somebody. OK, look, voicemail. There, look, click the voicemail. It's written there in plain English. Look, just click it. Date with me. Or introduce me to your friend. Don't and just leave me Wait, is that normal? Do I want to move? Oh, what what is love? Oh, oh, you've sought a pretty cock. And... <laughs> Oh my God, you know the way it goes. Is it good? <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh. <coughs> I'm actually. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just, everyone should do that after clips, turn to the audience and go, is it good? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, listen, we must remind everybody uh, that the Great Pottery Throwdown returns this Sunday on Channel 4 at 7.45. Yeah, it looks uh, like I'm in prison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they're, they're considering you for parole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, now, they've had to... Apparently, the potters were having a problem with you. <laughs> Look, I love it so much. I, I like... I, as an actor, you always have your in-between gig, you know? And I call um, this the best in-between job ever. It's my... It's, it's the best job ever. I adore it. And I don't feel, <laughs> and then people would agree, like a presenter in it. I feel like a viewer, so I'm, I just get far too excited. But anyway, the upshot is, is that... Um, they have to distract me and keep me occupied, so they literally developed, like, pottery daycare for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, they really did. We've got a picture of you in your pottery daycare. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm infantilised a lot there. I love it. They feed me, <laughs> they dress me, it's the whole thing. Uh, now, James Warren, are you a pottery fan? I went to a pottery class. You know one of those ones where you, like, can do a bowl and bring, bring a bottle of wine? And I went with my partner and 
everyone else was having like just getting drunk and j making dicks, and I <laughs> went was real goody goody and made a really beautiful uh, bowl and oh. uh, didn't really quite. Well, I mean, I thought it was beautiful. It was yeah. probably a piece of shit, but I um, but I, I didn't really get the idea. It was meant yeah. to be a party pottery thing. And okay, I was like, yeah, Shut up. yeah. Because yeah. uh, but so you do like pottery. Oh yeah, but I can't do it. I just like <laughs> buying it. <laughs> okay. She likes <laughs> mugs. I like. No, I do like a mug actually. Yeah, it's a lovely mug. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, but I, I, whenever I'm somewhere new, I tend to try and find a little cup. Oh, nice. So I have a lot of little cups in my. But now here's the weird thing, uh, Jamie Dornan. You do know about pottery. Oh, everything. Yeah. No, but you, you, you have, you have potted. Uh, is that what it's called? I don't know. Uh, uh, yes, yes, that I is what it's called. <laughs> 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 From the verb to pot. <laughs> <laughs> I've, done, I've done a wee bit of it, oh, yeah, oh, t like twice, yeah, yeah, I've done, yeah. But, but in America, oddly? In L.A., of all places, yeah, back in the day, when me and, uh, I was living with Eddie Redmayne at the time. Um, this is 15 years ago now. Um, and we, uh, yeah, we went and potted. And, and now, you didn't remember, Eddie Redmayne found this picture of you doing pottery. I texted him today, cos I knew you were bringing it up, so I said, mate, do you have anything that, of that time? He found one, one, one picture, which I imagine you're gonna. Yeah, no, this is you. <laughs> this is you. Now, here's the thing. I've, I've, got, I've got a couple of things to say. Okay. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> <laughs> I do as well. yeah, we all do. <laughs> let, 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 me, let me kick it off. I, it I was going for an unforgivable hat phase <laughs> <laughs> in my <laughs> mid 20s. <laughs> and at one point, landed on like Oktoberfest Bavarian. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That is. Um, it's terrible. I, I look like I've been caught not doing pottery, <laughs> but wearing that hat. I think. <laughs> um, you know, I, I look miserable. I was having, I was, I was having fun. Sophie, apparently that's a theme. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sophie, what do you want to say about it? Well, I was just thinking, it's not really like a pottery place, is it? It's more give me, like... Give me a break. Well, no, it's like one of those places where they have them all in white and you just pick something and you paint it, like with yeah. children. Well, I did say it was called paint a pot. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to know something really embarrassing about that period of my life? I was well, in we, New York. We can I, see that. <laughs> <laughs> we do. I was at a. I was in New York uh, around that time, probably a couple of years before, 2006, let's say. And a friend of mine who's a movie producer had this uh, her kid's birthday party, and her kid was turning 13, and they were they had like you know the like Upper East Side, like well to do, whatever. Uh, James organised it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, and and they said, she said, Look, uh, Taylor would love it if you just popped in, whatever. It's 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 fancy dress, but do not feel the need. I was like, yeah, grand, whatever. I'll pop in. A lot of 13 year olds. I, I went by myself. All these 13 year old kids, all in really elaborate fancy dress. I, I got talking to these two young kids. One was dressed as like Dracula, and one was dressed as something else. And I was talking to her for a bit, and they went, I was wearing, it was my hat face, so I was wearing, like, a <laughs> trilby or something. And the, the guy went to me, oh, cool, Justin Timberlake, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not actually in fancy dress like that. <laughs> I'm actually going to meet my mates for pints. Um, and I, that was genuinely the last time I ever, apart from that time. <laughs> <laughs> Just a reminder to everyone, uh, Siobhan's new show, Extraordinary, launches on Disney Plus on the 25th of January. Thank you very much, Sean. <laughs> uh, right, it is time for music. The Scottish star holds the record for the UK's most streamed song of all time. And now, after three years, he's back with an album due in May. Here he is to perform his latest single, Pointless. Please welcome Lewis Capaldi. <laughs> Bring her coffee in the morning She brings me in a piece I take her out to fancy restaurants She takes the sadness out of me I make her cards on her birthday She makes me a better man I take her water when she's thirsty She takes me as I am I love it when her mind wanders And she loves it when I stay at home I know when she's lost and she knows when I feel alone 
From all my years and graces To the little things I do Everything is pointless without you Of all the dreams of chasing There's only one I choose Everything is pointless without you I light the fire when it's cold out And she lights up the room I hope that she'll love me forever She hopes I'll be back soon I love when she laughs for no reason And her love's the reason I'm here I know when she's hurt And she knows when I'm feeling scared From all my years and graces To the little things I do Everything is pointless without you There's only one I choose Everything is pointless without you The show's nearly over. Oh, the show's nearly oh. over. <laughs> uh, how are you? Thank you very much for that. No, thank you. I've, I must apologise. And all the excitement walking over with the cheers, I may have, have farted slightly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was pointless. You can buy the single now. Uh, Pre-order the new album, Broken by Desire to be Heavenly Sent. And, and I noticed in the time that you've been away, you've been writing with other people. I have. I've written songs for other people. Most of them have been... Tragic failures. <laughs> oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> Is that why you don't... You don't credit yourself as Lewis Capaldi? I don't put my name on them just in case they're absolute fucking duds. <laughs> <laughs> um, by Jamie Dornan. Yeah, so I, I use pseudonyms. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pseudonyms, which means fake name. <laughs> it's what, something I only learned this year. <laughs> so, yeah, I use two, uh, two pseudonyms, usually. One in Scotland. If you go for a shite, you go for a jobby. That's what, that's what it means. <laughs> so one of them I use is Anita Jobby. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, the other, <laughs> and the other one is uh, Suka Fat One. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm meant to keep them secret. You are meant to keep secret. <laughs> but I think when you look at me, you think, Suck a fat one. <laughs> <laughs> but these are actual credits on songs now. Yeah, yeah, there's one by Kygo and Dean Lewis that came out. That one actually did well, so... <laughs> fuck, actually, I've just... <laughs> just called them all duds and now that I'm... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Kygo and Dean Lewis, that one did very well. And Anita Jobby wrote that one. <laughs> Anita Jobby, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Suck a fat one's yet to have any cuts, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm really I'm holding out hope. <laughs> Um, so any budding artists out there that want to suck a fat one, give me a call. <laughs> we all know how you get ahead in this business. <laughs> <laughs> What's the story, Lewis? Now, did you have you worked with Jamie Dornan? No. So what happened was that song, Pointless, yeah, was supposed to be my first single. Oh, right. Um, and I, I reached out to Jamie, handsome guy, as we can all agree. 
Yeah. <laughs> that was a bit yeah. slow, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I was a bit like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I've just seen him in a hat. <laughs> 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 He's lost his allure. <laughs> it's actually, but we've never met before. No. So it's weird to see you, because I'm used to seeing you like Fifty Shades of Grey. Mm. So it's weird... All right. <laughs> it's weird seeing you, like, here, mm. without, like, a whip in your hand. Yes. <laughs> and me... Oh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and me without my cock in mine. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Lewis, it's great to have you back in the world. Uh, oh, is that the time? Uh, uh, good luck with everything. Lewis Capaldi, everybody! <laughs> OK, that really is it. Welcome back. We've just got a, a quick visit, the first visit of the year, indeed, to the big red chair. Uh, let's find out who's there. Hello, sir. Hi, Graham. Hi, what's your name? Carl. Carl, <laughs> lovely. And you seem nervous, Carl, relax. I'm a bit <laughs> Yeah, no, you're good, you're good. Where are you from, Carl? I'm from Northern Ireland, <gasps> um, near Port Rush. OK! Yeah, near Port Rush, near Port Rush. Oh, okay. OK. Carl, off you go with your story. Um, so whenever I was fresh out of university, I worked in a small regional office. And one day, one of my, my friends, who I'm quite close with, I, I play football with and go out with, he was walking towards the, the toilets. And I thought, I'll, I'll go in and wind him up. And, uh, I took my eye off the ball and he, he must have doubled back on himself. And uh, so I get up, I go to the toilets and uh, I walk in and one of the cubicle doors is, is closed. So I walk into the other cubicle and uh, I slide my foot in to play like cubicle foot, say as a joke. Uh, and I put it in, there's no reaction. So I think, oh, I didn't see it. And uh, I slide it in further and I touch his foot <laughs> and, and the guy just pulls his foot away. And I was like, oh shit, it's not him. So, <laughs> Next thing, the door opens and I lock my door. Uh, you know, I say, oh, God, and I sit in the seat and I pull my shoes up. <laughs> and I just sit there and there's a bit of a silence. And then after a while, the, the guy leaves and I just sit in there for about two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I let people come and go and I think I'm, I'm not coming out. Um, and then the next day, two days later, uh, I was in the, the kitchen and I was chatting to this guy. He's one of the really high up bosses. And he's chatting to me, and next thing he just looks down at my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> that's when I realised. That's a good story. You can walk. You can walk. Go on, Carl. Walk. Sweet. Sweet story. Sweet story. Yeah. Okay. Nothing too awful happened. It was nice. Uh, that really is all we've got time for. If you'd like to have a go in the red chair yourself and tell your story, you can contact us via our website with this very address. Please say a huge thank you to all of my guests tonight. Lewis Capaldi! <laughs> Siobhan McSweeney! James Norton! Silvio Ganedo! And Miss Jamie Dornan! Join me next week with pop star Ray, comedian Alan Carr, West End legend Beverly Knight, Hollywood actor Margot Robbie, and double Oscar winning great Kate Blanchett. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye bye! <laughs> The boardroom is open for business. Lull in the new apprentices into a false sense of security in Antigua. Press red and watch that now on iPlayer. Donny Osmond is on BBC One next. That's my jam.